Hello everybody and welcome to Darkest Dungeon. In the previous episode, we beat the Incant Flesh and we went out on another adventure after and both were very successful, went well. Trell got a little close, but luckily he has pulled through and uh, he, is, he is okay. Uh, but yes, we are going to get into another episode. We have no one to introduce this time around, but we do have a lot of diary entries to get into. So let's get right into this episode. Here we are in the cursed estate once again. And you may be noticing that I am significantly lower on funds than when we uh, last left off. That's because I did a few things. I basically, I went and upgraded a bunch of our heroes up to level three armor. So I think all the way up to about, yeah, all the way up to about here, everyone's got level three armor. I think people are still light on some of their spells, um, some of their uh, skills, should I say. Um, not spells, but yeah, their skills, they're a bit light on those, still the upgrading, but this is going to be an uphill struggle, and this is exactly why we have things like the roaming collector and the extra money for gems, because we have far, far, far more people to manage and upgrade than usual. Um, and also, I put Sixth in the treatment ward to remove his Mist the Spot, which is something that someone suggested that was a negative quirk he had that was minusing 3% or 2% crit off of him. And considering he is meant to be dealing a lot of crits, obviously that is really against his nature, so we're going to remove that. Um, and yeah, so let's get into our backstories over here. First up, we have David, our ironclad. This is a backstory by T.E.A. David is an engineer, a tinkerer, a mechanic. He built all sorts of doodads and useful inventions within the confines of his rather large home, which contained its own library and workshop. One day, the letter came, he was being recruited as an engineer for the king's army, and they wanted him to build a war machine, and he accepted. He had to, it was the law. He spent weeks in his workshop building, building the terrible machine, contemplating what this would mean for the poor souls at the business end. He eventually learned that they planned to use it as an enforcer within the walls of Armidius itself. This is where he drew the line. The next day, they came to pick up the machine, and there it was, up and running and David was sitting inside. He tore through the king's army and the city guard and nothing could stop him. He had perfected his machine and he let fire and rubble behind him as he left through the front gates of the city. Unsure where to go, he just kept going down the road, being forced to rob in order to survive. He realised what a poor de uh, decision he had made for himself and he should just destroy the machine and deal with the consequences. But he was here now, overlooking the hamlet. Maybe here he could find some way to help with the destructive machine. Absolutely brilliant. I love this class. It's such a wacky class and it's probably by far the most like out there sort of against the law class that we have. But it is a really fun class to play and I'm really excited to have uh, David on our team. Thank you for that backstory. This is Yatsu, our sister's class. And this is a backstory by Softroll. After hearing about her husband's unfortunate passing, a flame was ignited in her heart. It seemed as if she understood her curse, but she needed to help. So she seeked a monk who was known for his wisdom and his name was Kaminari. He taught her how to control it and how to put it to good use. And after months of training, she was re ready to take on whatever Ever filth that took her husband's life in the name of revenge. So that again, beautiful backstory there. This is a class that I need help with. I have used this class in my own time. I do not understand how to use this class at all. <laughs> so please do give me any help you can with the sisters. It seems like a very interesting class and I'm very happy to have the sisters on our team. And I really do like the... Um, the story building with uh, Kaminari and Monk as well. That's great. But yes, on to the next one. Here we have Mars, our Fury class. And this is a backstory by Cell or Unstable Strafe. Mars and his counterpart Venus were once a single being. They were an ancient priest who gave up their body so it would be able to fight for those who needed it. They gave up their mind so it could take form and protect the weak. Mars is the body, a beast of pure rage who sought out only destruction of evil and a single-minded dogged doggedness. He was cast deep within the cave to slumber until he called upon by Venus, who feared he would become a threat unless given a proper cause. During the time, he was able to reach towards his sister's mind, feeling her compassion but not fully understanding it. Though he was unable to comprehend her love for others, he began to learn a crude version of good and evil, and once the estate fell, Venus summoned him to fight the spreading corruption while she made her way there herself. So this is the 
sort of brother sister from a single being dynamic between Mars, our Fury, and Venus, our Twilight Knight, which is, I I'm really excited to see these two work together, and I really love this back and forward backstory. Any any of these intertwined backstories are some of my favourite. Uh, another great backstory there by Cell. On to the last one. Lastly, we have the Enigma, and his name is Unknown. This is a backstory by Soft Roll. Um, he, he said as well, we could call it the Warrior of the Sun, but we do actually have a class called the Warrior of the Sun now. So um, we're just we're just going to leave him as name unknown, or maybe even we'll just call him unknown. I I like I like the idea of having a character that we have nothing like we don't really know much about. Uh, and this is the backstory here. As the sun shined on a sculpture, and as ancient magic filled it, it came to life. You summoned me, the sculpture said. Why to serve? The matriarch replies, you will follow my apprentice into the darkest dungeon and help her on her quest to cleanse the dungeon. And why would I do that? The sculpture replied, because I am Celeste, priest of the sun and bringer of the light, and you are the warrior of the sun and you must serve, she told him. Then I will serve, and so he was on his way to the darkest dungeon. So quite literally, a sculpture brought to life by the deity of the sun. I'm again, I'm loving these backstories. They're so good. So we're going to have some interesting like healing stuff going on with uh, Enigma. I think Enigma, from what I remember, has the ability to be very offensive and like very healing centric as well so this obviously is main heal here unusual dynamism uh, it's going to have a 50 percent chance to cure stress and also a half decent heal there as well but also she has some of these abilities which have like armor piercing they have a base of zero percent stun and bleed but their stun and bleed chances can be buffed with her other skills uh, like this one look 140 percent stun chance 140 percent bleed chance things like that and that's going to be really really nice to uh to, to buff them and then use the mystic bolt in combination even without they stun and bleed though this is still a very very good pretty decent damaging thing especially with armor piercing even if it is lower damage but there are our classes that we have taken on but yes we have a we have a lot to go through today as i said we do have some um we do have some uh, diary entries to go through here i think we'll uh, we'll actually start off with the the the, the longer one this is a, a diary entry by cell for um our revenant trell the shed that the tavern keep had given me to use as a home was in need of some repairs. It's about the size of a small cottage and most of the wood had been rotted or eaten by termites. A portion of the upper ceiling had caved in and it smelled of wine and old rats. Old wine and rats even. I looked into the town for someone who could help me patch it up and thankfully Dismas and Harathan offered to pitch in with the handiwork. It took some persuading but I could also get Will to provide some of the funds and lumber. And then four days into construction. So far, we have patched most of the holes and replaced the wood. The local houndmaster had also offered his services in chasing out the vermin, and I'll make sure to repay him later. Renault had begun to do some of the heavy lifting of his own accord, and later in the day, we divided the house into some rooms. A bedroom, a living room with a kitchen, and a bathroom. It isn't particularly spacious, as I would as spacious as I would liked, but it's on par with most of the village homes, if not a tad bigger. And then 10 days into construction, while the rest of the guys finished the house, I decided to go shopping for some furniture and cooking tools. On the way, I ran into Mary, who was looking for some new clothes. She seemed to be low on coins, so I decided to chip in a bit as an act of goodwill. I don't think many people are kind to her, so she was taken aback by it at first. Eventually, she took the clothes and gave a rushed uh, fellow before farewell before setting off to the woman's barracks and then 14 days into construction it took about two weeks but we finally finished the house it smells much better than it used to and certainly looks a lot better as a thank you to all the people who helped me i roasted some prime steak and bought that i bought earlier that day and served it with some sweetened rolls that mary had brought to me in gratitude for helping her until he can afford his own home i've let dismas stay on the couch at mine as well Oh, I love that backstory. That's so good. So if you remember last time, Trell had been given a small little shitty hut to live in because he didn't want to live in the barracks. And uh, yeah, he's built that up with some of the townsfolk and some of the other um, some of the other heroes here and starting to build some relationships. I really love that little uh, diary entry there. Very happy with that one. We also have another entry from Cell, and this is one for Sixth during the wheeled mission that we took part in last episode. Could it be? I was pushing through some brush and felt some, some of the surroundings were familiar somehow. I discarded the thought as we were engaged with another group of horrors, and it was only until later on when I saw a weathered bronze fence that I knew where I was. After a few minutes of searching, I found my old study. 
With the help of the others, we quickly gathered up what we could, and this discovery will help me and Sun track the monsters much better. Great little backstory there. Um, delving deeper into Sunasis, our librarian, and Sixth, trying to track and help beat these monsters and give everyone a bit of an upper hand. I really like that. I think today we're going to head into the Warrens on another long mission. Because we have the sealed deeds here, which are um, a claim and only trinket, which is going to increase their healing skill but reduce their blight and uh, bleed cure. But I'm really happy with that. I think having the healing skill do so much more is a lot better i also have to say so we have some other things that we can do here um like getting the sun ring would be really good in fact we might want the sun ring even more the main reason i'm thinking of warrens is because warrens is currently only um only level three and everything else is level four but if we take a look at somewhere like the ruins we have some bosses so we have the next version of the necromancer um we have the next siren and this is incredible okay so we have the next hag here look at this trinket just be in awe of how amazing that trinket is <laughs> i really want to do that but that is a level three veteran quest and we only have one level three character so we have to be very careful about that um we, we can definitely take level ones into level two quests we just have to be very wary and careful about it um the sun ring seems seems really pretty darn good but i think i'm i think i'm more inclined to go into the warrens get this claimant seal uh the sealed deeds and up the level of um of the warrens a little bit here so it's kind of a question of who we're going to take here we have a lot of newbies here that we can take I'd, I'd be inclined to take david david's actually really good he has um i think it's i think it's these two skills here let me have a look um yeah so we, we do we use oil spill and it increases the damage of flamer by a hundred percent and that's gonna deal a lot of damage there uh, it also has a, a chance to stun us but I, I think that's not a massive issue and then we've got things like the iron fist which again has a chance to stun so giving him stun resist would be very very nice um because his stun resist isn't super high right now uh got the drill punch as well he's going to random target move us forward a little bit we also have some of these skills as well such as his grease gear which is going to increase his speed and accuracy heal him a little bit actually that's that's a, an incredible one there and we also have self repair repair here which is going to stun him but it's going to up his protection give him some uh, re restoration and actually do a little bit of healing as well but i think it, it could be a good idea to bring david along with us here david definitely seems like uh he could do some really interesting stuff. And we also do have the Warren's Tactician on him, which means he is going to deal a little bit more damage in the Warren. So I think we'll definitely take him. Uh, Where's he going to operate best from? D probably second position. Doing this Flamer combo is going to be the way that we go about it, I think. Um, and then I would like to bring um, Venus and Mars out, but I'm pretty sure that, um, that, that both Venus and Mars kind of sit up at the front. And we probably want to play into that, so we'll probably not go with them for now. I'm trying to think of people that it's been a little while since we've brought since we've brought out. It would be nice to uh, sort of go along with some of the people that we haven't been out with quite as much. Chasey still hasn't been out a lot, and Chasey's very very good. She can remove uh, remove the stress on people. She can also do some stuff like um, stealing damage, things like that. Maybe we'll bring out Chasey, see how she goes. She can also. Lower some stress and things like that too, which is always nice. Um, and honestly, we might want to bring out uh, we might want to bring out our enigma too, wherever the enigma is gone. Where's where's unknown? I've lost unknown. Unknown, where are you? I've completely lost unknown. <laughs> this is difficult. Where's unknown gone? We have so many people. There's our Enigma. So, I think if we bring uh, our Enigma here, um, it actually looks like we... <laughs> okay, this is this is difficult. We, we, we probably can't bring Chasey if we want to bring Enigma because of the way that his skills are. Um, so, let's have a look. We definitely want that on. I, I'll probably keep Mystic Ball on here. Do we want to put this on? Yeah, probably. Buff self. That's a really, really strong buff. We'll probably go with that, yeah. Um, keep you... So we'll put you there. Oh, I accidentally put our... Um, I wrote the wrong class back here. Where are you again? I've, I've, I'm just losing everyone constantly here. It's not good. It's not good. I'm losing everyone constantly. 
It's one of the lower rank level two, so it should be down here somewhere. We've got a lot of people that are like exactly level two. Uh, so you go there. Um, Hamurabi would be nice to bring out. Like I said, though, I still want to bring out some of our level ones. We have a lot of level ones, and some of which have only been out once, some of which haven't been out at all. And we don't want to get into a habit of leaving too many people at level one. Because it will be way too hard to rank them up eventually. So we don't want to get stuck with too many level ones. Um, Willow could be interesting here. I think I think I am going to bring Willow. I think I am going to bring Willow. Willow's really fun. Uh, let's have a lo little look at his skills. Undying. Ooh, that's interesting. Armor piercing and a free action. It will suffer 4 HP damage and it always crits at death's door. We probably won't be benefiting too much from his, his light, his light um, sort of darkness. Benefits that he gets on some of the things, like the 5% damage per darkness, because I tend to not play at dark. But, um, HP damage. Interesting. I like that. Allies do get extra stress from that, though. And we also have this, which is going to... I think we want to... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll upgrade him a little bit and just uh, check out some of those skills. Hey, Willow. Um, so we probably want this. So that's going to mark self... Yeah, we definitely want that. Uh, and we'll put that on instead of... Instead of this. I like the summon burn wall. That could be really good. We're going to deal 8 damage to ourselves, but it summons a burn wall, which is immobile and guards the party. Uh, that has 3 health, 1 block, and 5 protection. And while channeling, we get quite a lot of stress per round, actually. We might have to make sure we have some, some good stress management here. Anyway, so we'll bring you... We have some good stress management here, actually. This should be good enough, I think. And then, who are we going to bring in our back line? Who are we going to bring in our back line? That is a good question. Because we have we have a, a lot of people that, that do really well here. Maybe Matthew could be good to bring with us. Uh, mean, meaning he can heal himself. Uh, we could also put that on as well. Yeah, I think, I think we're going to do that and put that on him as well. Just so we've got more chance of dealing with the stress when we need to. And he's got a little bit of self-heal there. It really depends. We've got enough healing. I think everyone's got enough self-healing to sustain. Um, Grease gear. I might... I'm tempted. I'm tempted to put that on as well. Maybe we'll switch to that if we start getting low HP. This is a this is a pretty difficult like mission to be honest. And this composition isn't like the end all be all super great or anything. Um, so this is going to be kind of an odd one to play with. But let's um let's have a little look, shall we? So Dark Wraith, we do have a few trinkets on Dark Wraith. We probably don't want to use them though because they're they're um specifically for doing things per darkness level. Let's go come to him last. Do we have anything for Ironclad? No, we don't. Anything for our Enigma? No. And we only have this for our Hound Master. Okay, so we can kind of play this however we want, realistically. You may have seen as well that I've taken all the trinkets I've ever won. Someone suggested I do that because there's a chance that you can lose trinkets if you keep people with their trinkets on. So I thought maybe, maybe wouldn't be the best idea for us. Um, yeah... I'm thinking, shall I maybe bring someone else other... This is so difficult. I don't know whether I should bring someone else other than Matthew. Um, simply because we, we've got a lot of people that are low rank. And it might be a good idea to bring other people. Maybe we could bring Nori here, the Acolyte of the Sun. Um, what exactly does she have here? So she's going to get extra damage... Let's take a look at her skills and go through this. This this is this is going to get to the point where this has ended, ended up being the longest part of the episode. But that's, that's fine. So here we have... Um, it's going to move him back one, but it's going to blight. Uh, it's also going to give him a bit of restore. Uh, we have res um, a restore party, but a chance to cause disease. Um, we have focused regen, which is going to um, cause disease, but transfer restoration. If we have, do, do we have something that moves you forward? We don't. Um... Enemies clear corpses and summon Avengers Mirage. I'm thinking though, maybe maybe these won't want to work with the Dark Wraith. Let's try it out. Okay, they will. They will. We'll um, we'll we'll, we'll chalk that up to the fact that they have no idea what he's what he's made of, and it's going to come as a shock to them as they as they go through. But I think this is probably a good group here. Um, buff target with plus one combat option. 
debuff target with like, less speed. Um, focus ray. That's going to... Whoa. If torches above 30, 25% damage taken for two rounds. Wow. So... Wait a minute. Is that plus 25%? Oh my god. That's amazing, I think. If I'm reading that right, that's really good. Okay, this this seems like a pretty good group. I'm I'm a bit apprehensive, but I, I'm gonna try this out. So let's let's get you going with with your um, amazing damage. We want to be buffing your damage up as much as possible. You don't have a lot of dodge, so we'll go with the accuracy and crit, uh, as well as I probably want to go with the jar of slime on you, but it might be better to just go for the straight up flat damage. 25% extra damage is pretty good. That is going to lower his speed slightly, though. Um, no, let's go with the Jar of Slime and keep him going. We're going to be hitting everyone here, so do we have anything that affects that? That would up our debuff chance, things like that. That, that could be quite nice. He's not going to be doing bleed, so that's not really the best thing for us. He does have a lot of health. He has an insane amount of damage. The chance to do an insane amount of damage, at least. Which is, is very, very nice. Uh, we might want to give him some, like, high prot or something like that. Um, hmm. Maybe we'll go for the high prot route with you, then. Um, you can have that. And you can also have... Where is it? Here. Okay, you've got insane prot. You're basically just never going to die. W why do these guys start with such high... He starts with 40 prot. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Okay. Um, you do not have a lot of maximum HP. We've got to be very careful with you. But he does have the he does have a skill that allows him to buff his maximum HP. And then who are we going to be doing the majority of our healing with? I think it's going to be you. So we'll put that on you. Um, and then... I might just go with the minor stress because we're on quite a, a long expedition here. It might be might be the most worthwhile thing to do. And I don't think we have anything that specifically benefits you. So let's let's do that then. Let's let's just go. You can just have a bunch of prot. So again, you're you're crazy prot. Although lowering your speed is pretty bad. Maybe you want to up your speed. I don't think we have anything apart from the pig's feet that up speed though. So that's not the greatest. Not the greatest. Having you on really low speed makes you a fairly ineffective healer. I think I'm going to do this anyways, though. We've got two people at 60 prot. That's really good. And then... You're going to be... You're going to be doing quite a lot, aren't you? Um, Dark Sun Arrow. Restore. Heal. And then the Focused Ray. We probably just want... Is that is that a ranged skill? These are both ranged skill. Let's see if we can maybe buff ranged. So that's fine. More range and accuracy there. That's great. And then let's just lower your stress, shall we? Or should we maybe even up your prot and increase your stress? Ooh, it, this, is a, this is a difficult day for trinketing up people. A very difficult day for it. Um, it's, it's t it's qu I'm questioning basically everything I'm doing here. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think this is going to be fine. I think we should be good with this. Uh, let's try out this build and see how it goes. It's a bit of an odd one, I know, I realise, but let's try it out, shall we? So we are on a long adventure, which um, isn't the best. Used to gain immunity of Death Star for the price of your sanity. Ooh. Uh, probably won't use that, but still. So we still we still want to take like 30 food, 5 shovels. We'll make sure to get our torches first, so we know how much we have left after. Like 28 torches. And then we go another one of them, four of them, four of them, four of them, and four of them. Okay, so we, we, we didn't end up having enough money there, which is great. Uh, I think we should be fine with all of that. One thing I didn't check, however, is our camping skills. Um, so maybe we should have a look at that. Camping, camping, camping. Why do I never look at camping skills? Create a fragment of power. Ooh, interesting. Um, okay, so it seems like no one on this party has reduced nighttime ambush, which is a shame, but I'm just going to embark and go um, because, frankly, we're taking a really long time to get into this. 
Let's go through another diary entry while we're here, shall we? We have one by uh, TAE, and this is for Rinaldius, our Dragon Slayer, while camping in the ruins. This Renault fellow is using, uh, used to fight in the Crusades. For almost all my life in the Hamlet, I had seen him sitting in the Herm or the Abbey. Quiet doubt in his eyes. Today I can see that he has the heart of a warrior, his unwavering faith only strengthening him, turning his doubt and regret into power in the heat of battle. I am glad to be uh, uh, fighting alongside all of them. These warriors, champions, heroes of this small village hidden in the woods, driving back an evil greater than any dragon I've ever slain. Great backstory there. Absolutely love it. But yes, this is a weird group. I, I know. This is a really weird group. We've got a complete 100% of rune battles here. Um, I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. But we've got to take out weird groups every now and again. We've got to try something new. And this is like... Effectively... Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. That has... What the hell is that thing? I've never seen that thing before. Not good. Um, let's just steal life off things. Um, you need to go back this way. That that was that was really bad. I don't know what this thing is. Honestly, I have no idea. I've never seen it before in my life. Uh, I'm scared. Truly. So, we do oil. That does that de stealth. That's great. Okay. Um, this this is truly, truly horrible. <laughs> it's just throwing our group off so badly. Um. Oh my god. Right. Oh. Okay, that's a free action. That's good. I can't move you though. I can't. If I'm. Oh, this is awful. Oh, I can. I could have moved him too. Really, I should have done, shouldn't I? Oh my god. This is the worst. <laughs> Oh no, we're gonna get a death. We're gonna get a death, boys. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Oh, this is... This is just the worst. It's just the worst. <laughs> you have to go back there. I, I know you need to heal. Oh, I'm... I'm crying. Okay, let's heal you up. Oh, this is... Oh... My god. Thank god we've got a high prop party here. Thank god. Okay, that flamer is awesome too. Doesn't help that I'm dealing with new enemies. I have no idea if this is modded or just a higher difficulty thing. It's probably just a higher difficulty thing. So, if I use this... it We lose a lot of torch. But... We can minus a combat action off of an enemy, which seems amazing. Let's see how this works. Gives everyone regen. Okay, restoration. I thought it did, but I wasn't 100% sure. Oh my god. Right, you've got prop. So if we strike you, that does a lot of damage. That's really good. I like that a lot. And we're going to keep doing this so that you may be wondering why I'm doing that, because this keeps upping its maximum HP constantly. The restoration's so good here. Ow. That hurt. That hurt a lot. This is... Oh, this is... This has gotten very wacky. You still take extra flamer damage. I can't hit the back one, but let's just kill you and it takes out the corpse as well. That is so good. Oh. I like that as well. I didn't even know she had an arrow. That's, that's cool. Right. Let's heal that up. Yeah, we're basically going to be draining life because we're constantly getting extra maximum HP. If we keep doing this, his HP goes... It, it goes wild. It gets really high. Okay, so we've learned something today. If we... If we get caught out and get rearranged, it's very bad. <laughs> it's very bad. So we really we really want to hope that never happens again. But I can almost guarantee that's not going to be the case. So that scout there was really, really nice. Very happy to have that. 
one thing I have to say, our healing on this group is deceptively strong. Deceptively strong. It's really good. I really, really like it. I love this as well. So it shuffles them. It it minuses off dodge and accuracy, and it means they take more flamer damage. It's just it's it's all in all very very good. Oh, a crit, lovely. What do you get as a crit bonus? Prop, that's nice. I suppose it makes sense that he has so much prop, considering he's essentially just a living statue. But you can really tell the two that have prop and the ones that don't. It's, yeah, it's very obvious. So, yeah, these two. These two are actually like a match made in heaven. Because let's just have a look here. So, she has skills where um, it's going to be like taking down the torch. Because this took down the torch. I don't know why exactly. But we have skills that take down the torch. And then this guy is just gaining damage from that. Although we are using this mainly. <laughs> but this is, it's very good. It's very, very good. And here we go. Oh, I don't know what that is either. We got the surprise, which is lovely. Um, what health are you on now? 29. You're human, so we do deal extra damage on that, so we might as well go for it. We get the oil going, which just lowers the dodge and everything. I love that. Focused rare... I'm going to minus a combat action off of you. I don't know if that... I, I have no idea if that actually worked or not. And then you have high pro, so we'll strike you. That shuffle's useful, getting you up front. All in chain. Yeah, he definitely lost a combat action there. You can see it's taking him ages to go ahead. Wow, they are getting so many turns right now. Could you not, please? Don't worry. This guy's getting pretty spicy. Nice hit. Nice hit. Finally, he got, a, he got a chance to fight, but he didn't really do anything. And the flamer. Look at that damage. Wow, David. You are amazing. Amazing. And this having armor piercing is so good. This group is actually very strong. <laughs> this group is deceptively strong. I was very worried going into this, but this, yeah, this group is deceptively tough. Wow. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Um, Citrine. I'll take it over the holy water. I should have just taken, I should have just used the holy water. I'm dumb. It's fine though. But yeah. Deceptively, we da we have to take the deeds too. Sometimes I bring out too much stuff. It's fine though. Oh, we finally got um, a brigand treasurer. We finally got a brigand treasurer. Very interesting. First time. This is a mod. This is a modded um, character, the outlaw treasurer. Uh, obviously, as you can probably imagine, he holds treasure. If we kill him, we get the treasure. I think he can run away if we don't kill him quick enough. So I'm hoping we get uh, the chance to do this here. He did dodge that, which is unfortunate because we really wanted to get that going on him. Try and take him out. Okay, we should be fine here. We'll probably do restoration after this for the full group, considering everyone's getting a little low. Wow, this group shuffle is so good. Uh, I'm just going to go for a kill here. We didn't get it. Um, yeah, let's restore the party. Everyone getting restoration is very useful. Ooh, that crit strike that he keeps getting is, is difficult. There we go. Almost all of you are dead. Let's heal you up. Damn it. Damn it. We missed out on him. That's a shame. If that oil slick hadn't have failed, we'd have had a good chance of getting him. It's a it's a shame that it did. It's a shame that it did. Yeah, this restoration thing we can get going on here is really nice. Nice. You should get a buff for um for killing someone with a lifesteal, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's a real shame we didn't get him because he does hold some really good treasure. 
Oh, we definitely have to take that. God damn, this is this is a difficult one. Um, I reckon we're most likely going to get bled here, so I'm going to do that. We, obviously, we took way too much food as well. That's that, that's apparent. Stress levels are getting a little high. Getting a little high. And a little higher. Just take one of you out. Oh, almost. Not quite. Oh, nope. You killed him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't know why they bite other, other enemies. I'm not sure what that does for them. But I'm grateful. Do you know what would be a very smart move? If we if we had taken this, giving plus one combat action, I might actually do that. Because it would allow him to use oil slick and flamer on the same, like, round. Which would be very, very useful. Very, very useful indeed. And we'll go with that. Okay, that we're taking the, the one problem here is we really don't have the backline damage that we need for this group. That's obviously lacking. Eldritch blood. That's a, that's a shame. Uh, luckily, we kept our bandages. Hmm. Uh, we can't even hit you, so I'm just gonna do this. Restore everyone again. Why didn't you gain the restore? Maybe because you're at full health, possibly. You go. Neither of you died. And also, this guy with the flamer is upping the torch level. We just got the torch level absolutely dancing with this party. Absolutely dancing. Right, let's shoot. Oh, that didn't even kill him. Damn. Right, let's check what the Eldritch Blood disease does. That could be problematic for us. Um, yeah. That's horrible. So it's upping our resists by a lot, which is nice, but we're gaining more stress. Luckily, we have the Book of Sanity here, which is reducing that stress that we just gained, the extra stress. But still not good. Still not good. Oh, um, I'm I'm apprehensive about, uh, about camping, simply because at the moment, we're in a situation where camping, if it ends up being a nighttime ambush, it's going to be really bad for us, because that will party surprise us, and as we start in that first battle, a party surprise on this, like, this, um, group is not good. Okay, get the heal going there, set up the flamer. No, that's not what I wanted to do at all. <laughs> Damn. I used the wrong skill there. Whoops. Oh, it just does so much damage. I, I always, I'm always like in awe about how much HP these things have. It's so much. So having Blight on us is bad there because it does go through prop. Should be okay though. Also, we could use it on him to give him even more maximum HP gains. I wonder why sometimes they don't take the restoration. Is it percent chance? 85% chance. That's exactly what it is. Wow. Ooh. Um, hello. Acolyte Relic. 50% duration, a uh, 50% restoration amount received, 33% restoration duration, 20% disease resist. Sounds awesome. Um, I think we do this. Yeah, we actually get rid of that. We don't, we don't particularly need that. Get that on you, on you. Yeah, that's that's really really good. <laughs> Your stress is getting so high. Uh, but yeah, that's going to mean that we um, receive a lot more um, restoration. And then when we use the second skill, which is kind of how we're meant to do this, transfer restoration, we, we gain the restoration for less time, but we can transfer that to other people and they have the full duration of it. So it works out. Okay, surprise here again is really good. Uh, I think we do what we did last time. I'm still going to do this. A nice crit on there is great. We do that. Um, we do this straight away, which is going to lower our torch, but I'm fine by that, to be honest. 
I'm going to try and take him out as quick as we can. The drum's going to mark us. That's not good because we're going to take on more stress and stuff. Although they don't care about the mark at all. Wow, seven damage per turn. That's really, really nice. Really good amount of healing there. Flamer. No, it missed. What a shame. What a shame. Um... Do that again. <laughs> Just keep on getting him with that. Extra damage taken every time with that is so nice too. And this should finish him. And we got a 24 crit there as well. Huge. Huge. Oof. This is this has been scary, but my god, is this group good? Uh so we do this, and as we, as we'll see, we'll get more, we'll get more of that than everyone else. I think we'll just go for the kill there, to be honest. Lovely. Hunger. Finally, our first hunger check. I'm probably not going to camp if I can help it. Obviously, if stress levels get really, really high or, um, or there's another reason to, then I probably will. But for right now, we don't actually need to, so I'm okay with it. This is another reason I brought plenty of torches here, because we've got skills that reduce light. Some more normal brigands. I'm super sad that we let that brigand treasurer get away. That could have been so good, but as I said, we have we have one like major issue with this uh, this party. We don't have strong backline damage. Uh, Acolyte of the Sun is the only one that's got that backline damage. Nori's really the only one hitting anyone near the back. It's a shame. Point blank shot. That does hurt, but we have plus 14 maximum HP here, so... You don't have any pro. You have minus one speed right now. Um, just do that then. Get you near to full. Even though you do heal yourself a lot off of this. Nice kill. Yeah, Nori's great at this. But Unknown's been doing... Both of these have been doing absolutely great. But yeah, I kind of I kind of love this. This is going to be... Ooh, past turn. That's unfortunate. Uh, this is going to be like a great little interaction between these guys. Because these two are both warriors of the sun. But uh, the Acolyte of the Sun, well, I say Acolyte of the Sun's a warrior of the sun. She seems to be doing a lot of darkness things. Maybe she's against the sun? I don't 100% I don't understand the law that's went behind her. I'll have to go over her backstory again. Um, so, yeah, Nori is built in darkness sort of thing. I know that Nori is like a dark name. I'm going to be honest, I just don't know what Acolyte means. I know that it means something, but I'm not sure what. Uh, right. Let's let's hope we find a secret room here. But yeah, this is going to be an interesting build, I think. Interesting, uh, some lore is definitely going to come out of this. More hunger. But honestly, everyone's getting on reasonably well here. I think any time you can do a long battle without the need to camp, you're in a pretty good position. Yeah, that Brigand Treasurer would have been great, but there's one thing we got to think about. Where would we have put anything we got from it? The the shuffle might be the best thing about this guy. Being able to shuffle units that easily, it's very good. Annihilated. Absolutely annihilated. Okay, we definitely need restoration here. So let's patch up. Restoration. Everyone needs it. We're just going to hit on you. Nice. Nice crit there. David, you're doing well. And your bleeding... Your bleeding is, is much worse. We're going to heal you, just in case. We don't want that bleed to take you over. We're going to do party restoration again, I think. And keep on that lifesteal. Keep your maximum HP up. Flame on. Nice dodge, everyone. Right, go on unknown. Take him out. Finish you off. Nice one, Willow. Ooh. I definitely want both of those. Uh, well, this is tough. Okay. Ballsy decision here. Ballsy decision. 
Now we can't camp. <laughs> but we only have three possible rooms left. So that trap isn't good. Definitely ain't doing that today. That isn't this is not the day for that. We have a battle here. Flamer here could be so good. It's sad that he has such low speed. If he had higher speed, this would be incredible. We have to set that up early. Nice. Um, I think I'm just going to go for the Dark Arrow. That gets us a kill straight away, which is great. That hits all of you, which is awesome. Finishes you off. Oop. Getting the bite. Bite and blight. It's not great. Double the blight there. Don't worry, though. We'll be able to get a lot of that back here. But yeah, another reason we'd end up losing like a lot of our maximum HP here on these... Uh, if we camped, I think. I don't know if we lose all of it. Someone told me that when you when you camp, you lose it. So that might be true. I'm not 100% sure on that. I love the fact that there's a spider there and he's just like flamethrower. And you, you can't actually see, but I'm doing the action. <laughs> I do love that like complete overkill that he does there. See, so yeah, as you can see here, we have literally two possible rooms left here. We should be fine. Uh, we, ha we don't have any bandages left, sadly. Right, last one, hopefully. Nope. So this is our last fight right here. Of course, it was the last room we ever went to. And of course, I brought way too much food. I need to remember that in the, in the future. I always bring too much food on these adventures. This is our last fight. Pretty, t pretty tough one. We got some stress dealers back there. Uh, I reckon we're going to end testing Willow's resolve here. He resides in darkness, though. He's used to it. That miss there definitely, definitely isn't good. Okay, hopefully that sets up nicely for everyone. I'm going to try and take out the stress deal, is it? That one has high dodge. There you go. That's probably his resolve tested. That miss there is critical, though. Really nice. Wow, everyone everyone wants Willow. Should have given Willow the protection, I think. Willow's resolve will be tested this fight. Nice. Okay, that's one stress dealer dealt with. That's two stress dealers dealt with. He's still going to test his resolve, though. He has so much stress to gain. Unless we manage to keep beat this before the next two turns, which I doubt. I very highly doubt. That helps. <laughs> Certainly. Focus rare. Stop you from attacking. In fact, put out the light. It didn't work. I was hoping that would help, but it, it didn't. Yes, okay. Ooh, that's nice. So we'll, we'll definitely take that. Uh, get rid of that. Let's just open this chest real quick. Wow. His resolve didn't get tested by one... Oh, no, two ticks. It would have been two ticks. No, no, it would have been one. It would have been one more tick of stress. Crazy. Nice one, Willow. We escaped there with our sanity and our life and quite a lot of money. We missed out on a little bit there. David. Wow. David and Unknown in just one quest have made it to level three. Surprising. But that's what happens sometimes. You get lucky. And we've, uh, we've got another few level threes here. So we'll get all of those up there and we'll, we'll take their trinkets off. But that, that group was surprisingly effective. I was very happy with that. I can't, I can't believe getting this guy at 60 prot and this guy at 60 prot. Whoa, I've just completely lost visuals. Um, so I am working currently off my recording software. That's all I can see, my second monitor. So I do apologize if this looks a bit janky and I'm, I'm, I look like I'm stumbling. But my monitor is just completely turned off for some reason. So I think that's everyone done. Oh my god, this is so hard to do. Right, uh, that's everyone done. Um, but yeah, that worked surprisingly well. Nice one. Nicely done, Willow, David, Unknown, and Nori. People are going to have to go a bit more in-depth with Nori with me and tell me exactly how she'd function in this situation because I was a little bit unknown there in terms of roleplay. Ooh, and of course, we have some new recruits here, which is great. Uh, we have ourselves 
Let's have a little look-see. We might have to take our Librarian and do, do some leveling soon. So we have a level 3 Seraph, which is Angela over here. It would be really nice if my monitor would turn back on. I can't see anything right now. Um, Where's Angela? Angela here. So she's not going to drink some right now. We'll bring her in. Rename to Angela. And dismiss this Angela. Great. And then we also have a grave robber, which um, is Nina here. Two people jumping up the ranks, which is nice. Saves us a lot of money, definitely. Nina. And also, you may be thinking as well that I've, I've been spending money on some of these high, some of these guys here on armor and stuff, and I may well just get this situation where a high, higher level one comes in. That is true, but also, for one, I don't want to hold out and abuse that mechanic. Uh, wait, is this the right one? I don't want to hold out and abuse that mechanic, but also, um, I think it's better for us to invest and spend money on people no matter what. And then we do have a new class in the Pit Fighter, which I'm very excited for. Again, though, we have a lot of rank 1s. The, the main problem with having rank 1s really isn't, isn't particularly that they're rank 1. It's that we have to spend the time to rank them up. Uh, which means we're doing a lot of lesser missions that don't reward us as much, and we're making a much less story progression in terms of the actual game. But I'm sure you guys are understanding of that and can kind of get that that's not always going to be the primary concern for us. Uh, so we definitely want to sort by level. So I think I think 100% uh, Willow has to go in, and he is a definite penance man, 100%. He is a penance man through and through. He's going to get some stress reduction. I think everyone else is mostly fine. Maybe Nori could go in and uh, have some meditation. That would help out Nori a little bit. And we'll check here. By the way, I'm still running with no monitor here. <laughs> in case you were wondering. Uh, let's check some of these. I know we can't afford any of these, but I want to go through some of them and see what they, see what they are. Uh, wow, that one's great. There is some really good stuff here, but let's check the normal shop real quick. So we have the Cattails, which is extra damage, speed, and pro if afflicted. Uh, less virtue chance and plus stress. Interesting. Uh, Revenant here. This is this would be for Trell. He gets minus 20 stress. Uh, basically, he gets a bunch of bonuses if, low, if in low light and a bunch of negatives if in high light. Uh, we also have the Mage Arcana here. Plus 20... Ooh... Ooh, okay. Plus 20 healing skill. Plus 5 dodge. This is going to lower your maximum HP and crit, though. Uh, we've got extra stress healing while camping. I think we're going to buy this. This this card here. Because now, if we go and have a look at that, let's just organize these. Start by character. Uh, if we mix either um, this here. No, not this one. Where, where is it? I've lost it. I've completely lost it. I have completely lost it. That one there. If we mix this here, plus 25 on Vestal, with the uh, the card that we just got, which is another 20%. That's really good. Of course, the minus 20% maximum HP would be a huge problem because that would be mixing with minus 15%. Maximum HP. But it does mean that on pure healers, uh, that we can put this on mixed with uh, mixed with the, the smaller one, wherever that is. This one here, which is going to be really, really nice. Either way, uh, I'm going to have to go and sort my monitor out here. I think this has been a really productive episode anyways. Uh, so let's get into the last few backstories here and uh, go from there. Let's have a little look-see. So we've got one here from Ryan, our occultist. Another one by TEA. He's written a lot today. Um, I agreed to meet up with a woman who claimed to have some potentially valuable artifacts that she had recovered from the curve. Upon inspecting them, I confirmed their connection to an ancient sea god. And as payment, I took a couple home with me. The ones I took, however, were different. These ones hold a little bit of power from some otherworldly being that has roamed the stars for millennia, likely made by an ancient occult group. 
However, this star-spawned beast no longer travels beyond our skies. It is here, and currently, it sleeps. There is a barrier surrounding the farmstead where it landed, enough to subdue its power for now, but if we let this thing awaken, it will doom us all. Additionally, we may find something there that can help us. This thing holds a great power, and I would not be opposed to making use of it. That's another great insight into the Colors of Madness DLC there. Uh, then we have yet another one from TEA, and this is a diary entry for Will June, our heir, and this is before the wheeled mission. I've been invited to join an expedition. Apparently, they found my abilities quite useful. Speaking of which, during these past couple of weeks, I have mainly studied the occult and their artifacts that, one be, uh, that once belonged to my father. My weapon of choice against these monstrosities is also the same thing that spawned them, the same thing that led to my father so heavily corrupting this land, but I hardly see another option. I have no experience using any kind of weaponry, and I am too weak to even wield weapons or armour effectively. I found all of these terms and scrolls and other little trinkets that my father once had, and find using them to be rather simple actually. It just mean it's just a means to an end. Just a means to an end. Great stuff. And then the last one here from Prisoner 10. This is by Cell or Unstable Shrift. The paper seems to be worn with time. The page yellow. A crude drawing of a flower made with an unsteady hand can be seen on it. Nothing more is written except for one word. Remember. And that's a... a, a, a little nod to the note that we found up the other time there but that's that's it for the episode lots of lore lots of backstory and a really good mission with a really interesting crew i really enjoyed that being able to get through that whole thing without camping as well is a testament to the uh, power of some of these heroes that we've got going on right now and as I said, it's going to be a long journey in these coming episodes and this series uh, because we're going to have to spend time leveling people up and adventuring in. But it's all it's all building up to getting everyone ready to fight some of the harder things like we just did there on the level 2 mission. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really fun getting there actually. I'm really enjoying it and it's just going to make this series longer and longer, which I'm sure no one has a problem with because I'm enjoying this series thoroughly. Either way, I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.